Where are all the single-player pirate games? It seems all we have nowadays are live service games or online-only games, and it feels like we're just not getting anything since way back when with Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Now, where are the classics? The glory days we had Sid Meier's Pirates, a, a 2004 remake of an 80s strategy action game. Now, Pirates was amazing. It was separated into several mini-games requiring different skills, as well as an overall sailing map, you know, where the player, you know, you navigate around the Caribbean looking for things to do. You had sailing techniques, you had evasion, naval gunnery, it was turn-based strategy, uh, dancing with the daughter of a city governor, fencing, dancing with the daughter of a city governor, and strategic planning. And did I mention dancing, <laughs> the dancing minigame? Anyways, you know, there's just so many classics. Do you, does anyone even remember Pirates, The Legend of Black Cat? Pirate, we all have our problems. Ah, uh, yes. A 2002 hybrid title boasting a full third-person adventure and a ship battle system. And let me tell you, the ship battles almost make the entire game worth playing just on its own. Combat is enacted somewhat like old pirate ship battles. Ships are mounted with cannons, which can only shoot from the port or starboard sides. Each ship has the ability to sail at a regular pace or by using special wind power. Kind of like Wind Waker. <laughs> to sail at an accelerated, you know, pace. Once you find an enemy ship, the fight begins and you just blast away, you know, circling around, you know, waiting for everyone's cannons to reload. The ships also degenerate in real time, you know, catching fire or they slowly sink you know, having your mast broken, and it's just really cool to see. And then there's even the on-foot gameplay, which which even like the newest pirate game out today, Skull and Bones, doesn't really have, you know, any of that. So this, you know, back in the day with Black Cat, you know, you had a lot of collecting and fighting with a good amount of exploration tossed in. It's a very simplistic game, but one I recommend if you don't mind a little old school jank and you're itching for some single player pirate fun. Now, I could list more and more pirate games that I've played, but I say it's time to get to the crux of this particular topic. It has begun! Assassin's Creed is a juggernaut of a franchise for Ubisoft and is now probably their flagship series due to its monumental success. One game stands out among fans and it is universally loved. I'm talking about Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag the last numbered game in the franchise and one with such a huge departure from what came before. The modern day storyline was essentially over and done with and the developers had no clue how to continue it. And the game wasn't really an Assassin's Creed game like all those that came before. No, this, it was a pirate game. Taking on the role of Edward Kenway, the father of prequel Assassin's Creed 3's Hatham Kenway, arguably one of the best, most interesting characters in the whole franchise, Edward is the epitome of a swashbuckler, getting into bar fights, boarding and stealing ships, deep sea bell diving and spear fishing for sharks and whales. Guy was a beast. On foot, the game is what you would expect from an Assassin's Creed game, so I, I won't go too much into that, but naval combat is an upgraded version of what was done in Assassin's Creed 3. And boy, did Ubisoft absolutely nail naval combat in this game. It's why many consider it the best pirate, you know, naval mechanics in any video game ever. Sailing at different speeds, bracing for cannon fire as you circle around aiming to do the most damage with your cannons and, you know, with fire barrels and all kinds of stuff and any number of weapons and tools at your disposal to even crippling ships to then board and engage in some sword-to-sword -sword combat. The game, is, as an Assassin's Creed game to me, is really bad. But as a pirate game, I think it's one of, if not the very best there is. I personally refer to this game as Pirate's Creed, which I feel, uh, you know, after how well this game did, it was gonna spawn like a sub-series within the Assassin's Creed franchise and had more games similar in design. We sort of got that with Assassin's Creed Rogue, but it just wasn't the same. Now, way back in 2013, Ubisoft announced they were working on a game called Skull and Bones. Initially envisioned as an expansion of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, then an MMO spin-off title under the name Black Flag Infinite. It was then spun off as an independent project, in part due to its initial technology becoming outdated. The game was finally revealed 
during Ubisoft's press conference at E3 2017 and was marketed as a tactical action game set in an open world environment and played from a third person's perspective. You take the control of a customizable pirate ship and may choose to sail the Indian Ocean on a single player campaign or gather up five other players to ally in player versus player gameplay in disputed waters. Originally, the game was set to be revealed, you know, released in 2018, but the game just kept getting delayed time after time. In September 2020, it was revealed that while development was continuing, a new vision for the game had emerged, which resulted in release delays as more development time was needed. Additionally, it was stated that additional Ubisoft studios, such as Ubisoft Berlin, were co-developing the game alongside Ubisoft Singapore. On February 16th, 2024, Skull and Bones was finally released for the Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and PC for 70 bucks. Ubisoft CEO justified the $70 price tag of Skull and Bones, emphasizing its status as a quadruple A game, despite incorporating live service elements like an in-game store, battle pass, seasonal events, and premium currency. The game reportedly cost $200 million in its decade-long development, and Ubisoft doesn't even expect to break even. Now, while this story has a sad ending, I can't help but wonder why Ubisoft never decided to just branch away from Assassin's Creed and essentially make Black Flag 2, or what I would have done, made a spin-off from Assassin's Creed and just <laughs> essentially just call it Pirate's Creed. The potential is still there waiting to be realized and Ubisoft is just sitting on it, instead electing to remove parts that made Black Flag fun, like actually being able to leave your ship and explore and board other ships and whatnot. And on top of that, chase the dying live service trend literally everyone is sick of today. The only pirate game on the market right now seeing any form of success is Sea of Thieves, which is sadly also a, you know, a live service, you know, multiplayer game. Where are all the single player pirate games? It's a gold mine waiting to be mined, and no one has even bothered attempting it yet. At least that I'm aware of. Maybe Skull and Bones failure will be a wake up call for Ubisoft to finally realize that they have a concept for a single player RPG kind of game in the guise of a Black Flag, you know, pirate spin off. Hopefully, a studio other than Ubisoft picks up the slack for this egregious lack of single player pirate games as they are currently still in the process of slowly killing the Assassin's Creed franchise as they milk it to death. Anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment on what kind of pirate game you'd like to see in the future or if you think my Pirate's Creed idea has any merit. Talk to you next time. I have no say in it, Gibbs. It's a pirate's life for me. Savvy.